This is fun too. What's going on here, anyone? Is this like the songs to me? Hmm. Very good. Yeah, some people call this Masson's tumor, which uh, I use a colloquial, I use it when discussing, you know, with you guys, this is Masson's. But in my reports, I actually say organizing thrombus. Sometimes I'll say with papillary endothelial hyperplasia, because that's what Masson's, quote, tumor actually is. It's not really a neoplasm. It's just a, a funny pattern of organizing thrombus, where the thrombus starts to get uh, wrapped up by endothelial cells and recanylated in a way that creates lots of little papillary structures. So this is, is quite beautiful. Look at that layering, huh? You're kind of seeing layers of blood and fibrin that have kind of settled out over time and produced this nice uh, thrombus. And you can tell this is not a fresh new thrombus because it already has little tiny capillaries starting to form, right? In the middle of it. So as a, a you know, when, when fibrin you know, when blood coagulates and makes fibrin thrombus, you have basically three options of what can happen. Either the fibrin undergoes fibrinolysis and breaks down and dissolves, right? Or the thrombus becomes totally eventually organized, which is basically kind of the same idea as granulation tissue. It kind of becomes like granulation tissue and eventually scars down and it totally occludes the vessel. And then new collaterals have to develop or something. Or, or be used, or you get kind of a recanalization, which is a combination of organizing and making new channels through that thrombus, and then you kind of create like a new, new kind of vascular system. So that's kind of what's happening here. See, there's little vascular channels uh, coming through here, and sometimes as those channels develop, they can become kind of complex, interconnected, and anastomosing. Features that we often think of in angiosarcoma, right? And also the endothelial cells can get a little bigger because they're reactive new endothelial cells. And just like in granulation tissue, endothelial cells that are new and actively growing tend to look a little bit more plump and juicy and, and kind of scary sometimes. So the uh, the idea, and my, my understanding is that, it, and I've not read Masson's original paper, like I think from the late 1800s, I guess I probably should pull that and get it translated. I think it's in French. But the, uh, the idea behind it, I believe, was that, that this tumor can have resemblance to angiosarcoma, but it's inside of a vascular space rather than infiltrating connecting channels in soft tissue. It's in the middle of a vessel or, a, or a, you know, a, a, a thrombus in a vascular space or a malformation or a hemangioma, something like that. So almost always when you see Masson, look what we have in the background. If we ignore the thrombus for a minute, we've got these big open cavernous channels. You can see it best over here. See the big channels? And down here, big channels, right? With kind of a, kind of a thin muscular layer and then a lot of fibrosis around it. So you could call this a cavernous hemangioma or a venous malformation. They're probably a lot of the things we call hemangioma in, in pathology, particularly in dermopath, probably are actually a form of malformation. And people like to debate over those things, but when they're benign, it, usually does not matter. And so what, what happens anyway, though, is that as the, um, as the, um, the thrombus gets recanalized and organized, let me find a good area. Oh, there, see? Look how much it's starting to look like granulation tissue. You're getting endothelial cells, some reactive myofibroblasts in there, intermingled with the blood and the fibrin, right? And then eventually, what happens is the fibrin starts to break apart into little tiny islands. And as those get wrapped with endothelial cells, you end up getting papillary structures. And those papillary structures originally will have kind of uh, a fibrin in the core. But over time, they seem to like turn into fibrosis. At least that's that's what it seems like is happening to me. Like here, this stuff is starting to look almost like, you know, like actual fibrosis. But you get these little floating islands. And so those are really little papillary finger-like structures. But when we're cutting them... Um, you know, in cross section, they look like little tiny islands floating in the middle of this space. So the things that help me in this is in the middle at high power, it can look really complex. Uh, just like if you go to granulation tissue up close, it can look kind of scary. Same thing in an organizing thrombus slash papillary endothelial hyperplasia slash Masson tumor, whatever name you like.
But when you go to lower power, you'll see that you're inside a pre-existing vascular space. And usually you do not have, other than with the exception of inside like the great vessels, like the, the aorta or the vena cava, you know, in, in those great vessels, you can have sometimes sarcomas, including angiosarcoma, arise in the lumen. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. But in the vessels, like out in the extremities or near the skin, you almost, I don't know if I've ever seen a case of like intravascular angiosarcoma. So just to, once you see that you're inside a pre-existing vessel, that's very reassuring. One exception is, is a unique tumor, epithelioid hemangioendothelioma, which we're not going to go into today. And I've got a couple of little short videos about that. Um, but it actually usually arises inside of a vein and then grows outward. So it's kind of an exception to this rule, but it looks quite different than this. But anyway, that, that's the key is at lower power, you see you're in a dilated vascular space. And then you see that there's, in addition to the little interconnected channels, you start finding the, the papillary structures and they're wrapped by a little layer, a single layer of bland endothelial cells. And then you'll find other areas usually, at least some areas, depending on the age, the lesion, and how far along the process is, that have the smudgy, bright pink fibrin to tell you that you actually have a thrombus. And if you're lucky, you'll find areas where you can see that transition from thrombus into the papillary structures, you know, actually happening. I don't see a perfect example of that here. Sometimes you can see it really nicely but uh, this is still a good example of organizing thrombus. And so the last point I'll make before moving on is that the, um, that I find that a lot of times, you know, you, you, we think of malformations as being a thing in childhood, but, but I see malformations in older adults all the time. And I think what probably happens is they may have had this malformation down in their subcutis or something for a long time until it gets thrombosed for whatever reason later in life. And then it becomes either painful or if it's near the surface, it starts to turn like colors and turn, you know, violaceous or, or purple, blue, black in color and starts to raise concern to the patient or to the dermatologist or treating physician. Maybe there's melanoma, maybe there's something going on bad or the patient says it's painful and then it gets sampled. So I feel like a lot of times when I get malformations, they have some degree of, of thrombosis um, or uh, organizing thrombus in them because I feel like that, that often is the related potentially to what's making them present to get the lesion, you know, checked out and removed. So that's, that's kind of my theory, at least from what I've seen in, in practice. So nice example of intravascular papillary endothelial hyperplasia, Masson's tumor.